Right, so you've come today to Cybernetic Bacteria 1, we're calling it. The first ever, we believe, human to bacterial communication which will travel throughout the globe. Soil bacteria basically um, is a network, a very complex network that runs through the whole planet, um, interlinking through the globe. What we've done here, I've planted this, well, we've planted this tube into the soil with my collaborator, Dr. Simon Park here, <laughs> in the purple gloves. And um, we've planted the soil, this tube of, it, what it is in fact is a kind of soft liquid agar that allows the soil bacteria, it's planted directly into the soil, so it allows the soil bacteria to grow up into it. Um, so there's no added nutrients in here or anything like that. It's just literally giving it another direction in which to grow. The dye, the yellow colour, is coloured this way because um, it's got a dye in it. When bacteria grows in it, it turns yellow. So it's growing upwards now. You might be reaching the top quite soon. Um, why am I doing this? might be a good question I guess so some of you might say. I'm very interested in kind of notions of what's called the sublime. To me, I mean it has lots of different meanings this idea of the sublime, but to me it's about a kind of vast interconnectedness. At the heart of every cell in our bodies we've got something called a mitochondrion which is for all intents and purposes if you believe the endosymbiotic theory, which I do, um, it's it's a bacterial cell that formed a symbiotic relationship with our cells at an early evolutionary stage. So without bacteria, we wouldn't exist. There are around eight kilos of bacteria living in our gut, which um, are what help us digest our food. They're an integral part of our immune system. Our skin is covered with bacteria, which rather than being harmful to us or pathogenic, it, um, it's an integral part of our immune system and prevents more pathogenic, more harmful bacteria from, from actually growing on us. So it kind of protects us. Um, it makes me quite angry sometimes, the, the way bacteria is portrayed as kind of dirt in the media. Um, we, um, I mean, you get adverts on the television that say there are more bacteria on your toilet seat than on your chopping board. Um, but um, no, but more back the other way around. More bacteria on your chopping board than on your toilet seat, um, which would be more surprising. Um, but they're very different bacteria, and that's quite an important thing. We kind of, it's not this question of, and now, and now there's all this media coverage of friendly bacteria, and it's not really about friendly bacteria and then the evil bacteria, the rest of them. Most bacteria is just there, it's just living around us, all around us on every mouthful of food that we eat, it's in every mouthful of air that we're breathing in and it's running through our bodies constantly. And what amazed me, I mean and this, this, that kind of number of bacteria is sublime in itself. Try to hold in your mind how much bacteria, if you imagine there's more bacteria on the end of your finger than there are people in the world how many bacteria are just living in our bodies. That's, it's a vast number. But a, in a teaspoon of um, kind of topsoil like this, in one teaspoon there are billions of bacteria. Um, and probably more species of bacteria in that one teaspoon of topsoil than there are species of plants in the UK. Just in one teaspoon of topsoil. Um, but what amazed me the thing that really amazed me was bacteria, when I learned about bacterial communication, which this piece is about. Um, bacteria are all communicating constantly with each other. They do this using hormones, um, and the hormone that we have today is homoserine lactone, which we'll use to communicate with these bacteria. They communicate using hormones, and they can do various things with that communication. They can say, hello, I'm going to anthropomorphize, sorry, excuse this, excuse this, it's going to be hideous anthropomorphize. <laughs> they can say, hello, I'm here, I'm here. Or they might say, they might say, 
that wound over there looks really tasty, but they might have a really nasty immune response. Do you think that there's enough of us? Should we vote? Or <laughs> they might be a kind of bacteria that will spore, um, which means it goes into a kind of a dormant state um, when it, uh, you know, if it, if it's in a sort of starving, you know, if it loses food, it's not got enough food around what it wants to kind of consume, it will go into a kind of dormant state called sporing. Um, and that's quite a dangerous strategy for a bacteria, as they might lose their ecological niche. Things might change. They might concrete the place over or something. They don't, you know, they think the world could change. So they actually vote on that decision. They will vote on that decision. Um, so they do a lot more interesting and complicated things than just make us ill randomly. And. Um, one, I mean, from a biomedical point of view, bacterial communication is fascinating because if you could actually work out what to say to the bacteria, then you could say to them, don't go there, go there. Maybe in the future it might be the answer, you know, instead of antibiotics, just talk to them. <laughs> At the moment, it's a sort of hermeneutic issue, I guess, um, to bring philosophy into it again. It's, um, we're talking to them, but they won't know that I'm not a bacteria. That's the snag with this piece. I haven't got it to any extent where I can say, hello, I'm a human. They'll think I'm another bacteria. But if we could try and change that so they realised I was human or we could have some kind of meaningful dialogue, that would be quite interesting. We're a long way off from that, but it could be that it's possible. So that's kind of bacterial communication. What I'd like to do now is I'm actually going to add a drop of homoserine lactone to this tube. What will happen, and you won't see anything I'm afraid, that's why I've built it as the most insignificant performance of the Brighton Festival. <laughs> on, a, on a macroscopic level, nothing will happen. <laughs> You'll just have to go with me on this. But at a microscopic level, let me describe to you what's happening. The bacteria at the top of the tube will receive this message that I'm saying, I'm here. They will flag it on. I'm here. 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 In the end, all around the globe, in theory. We think it may take several years. We don't know. There really isn't any way of proving this which is, I guess, why it's art, <laughs> rather than science. You'll just have to go with me on this. But just think how connected we are to the Earth and how these bacteria, they're communicating to us as well. They can communicate to any living or plant cell around us or in us. They can even communicate to the cells in your gut and tell it to change its structure, things like that. So. It's a much more connected world. So now I would like to communicate to the bacteria. <laughs> My lovely assistant, Dr. Simon Park. <laughs> We have 100 microns of homoserine lactone being added. There you go. Isn't that great? <laughs>